Good morning, Chem 1 students. Are you ready? We have one last week. We have one last lab for you to take a look at. Titration is a very important process in chemistry. Chemists use it all the time uh, to help analyze solutions. And so let me show you the setup that we have uh, going here. The main piece of equipment here is something called a burette. Okay, and a burette is a very closely graduated device. Maybe hard to see all the graduations. Um, it's graduated in one milliliter increments, and those are subdivided into tenth milliliter increments, which means you can estimate the hundredths place when you read a burette. And it has a valve at the bottom that you can adjust, and you can let fluid out slowly, drip by drip, or you can just let it run fast. Uh, I always say this is like the counterpart to an electronic balance. If you have something that's dry, you can put it on the balance, weigh it, get the mass. We can change mass into grams very, or change grams into moles very easily. And with moles, you can figure out anything. This is the same thing. If I know the molarity that's in the burette, of the solution in the burette, and the burette reads the volume very accurately, I can say molarity times volume in liters is moles, and once I know moles, I can figure out anything I want. So this is a very important piece of equipment. So today what we're doing is an acid-base titration. Uh, we have some NaOH, some sodium hydroxide, which is a base already loaded into the burette. We know the concentration of this solution that's in here. We're gonna try to analyze a solution of HCl to see if we can determine what its molarity is. Okay, so this is our sample. And to make a titration work, you have to have something that's going to change color to tell you when the moles of the titrant in the burette are equal to the moles of the analyte that you're analyzing. And so today what we're using is phenolphthalein, which is an indicator that is pink in a base but colorless in an acid. So I don't know if we want to look at the board, Mr. Moore. I probably jumped ahead a little bit. No, yeah, that was fine. Okay, we can so, see all, all the things that you have at the lab. Yeah, so there are many, many different types of indicators. Phenolphthalein is one that gets used a lot. Um, as we said, an indicator is changes color based on pH. Uh, phenolphthalein is nice because it's pink in a base and it's colorless in an acid. And you get a real sharp color change um, when, you, when you're switching over from acid to base. Something uh, else that's important is uh, the end point. That's what occurs when the indicator changes color. And that color change is what tells you stop titrating. It's when you know the moles of acid and moles of base have become equal to each other. And here's our chemical equation. Right, this is a neutralization between NaOH and HCl. And as you know, it makes salt plus a water molecule. This is very difficult to balance, by the way. Yeah, how do we balance this equation? Brutal, brutal. Good thing you guys are smart. <laughs> um, and I can tell you this, that our burette, um, the NaOH in our burette has a molarity of 0.150. Okay, you're gonna wanna write that down. Yep, that's an important number. And again, what we're trying to do is to determine the molarity of the HCl, which is going to be measured out into the flask. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's the basis of our titration. Now, to try to get accurate results, we're going to run this more than once. Okay, so. Uh, the system that Mr. Moore and I have, have used over the years is to run three trials. We run a first trial, what we call fast and sloppy, just to get a ballpark idea of how much NaOH we'll have to add to get to the end point. And then we'll do two more titrations carefully to try to catch the exact drop that causes the color change. Okay? So the process is the same in all three. All right, so what we're gonna do is have an accurate volume measurement of our HCl, and so we're gonna use 10 milliliters. So let me measure that out. 
Remember, we're trying to find the molarity of the HCl solution. It's the whole purpose of this experiment. So we have to get a careful reading of what the volume of HCl is, because remember, molarity is moles of HCl per liter of the solution. So measuring the volume out, Oops, it's a little too much. we'll be able to determine what the molarity is. Oh, there's some tape on the cylinder, so it made it kind of blurry. Usually it's my eyes that make things blurry, <laughs> but today it's the tape that's on the cylinder. Okay. All right, so I've got 10 milliliters of the HCl. We'll add it to our reaction flask. Okay. Here's our phenolphthalein indicator. Okay, it only takes a couple of drops. Okay, so I've put in two drops of phenolphthalein. And again, HCl being an acid, the, the phenolphthalein is colorless at this point. Now, our burette has been filled already, and it's right to the top here. Burettes read from top down. This is zero up here. And then it'll record how much NaOH we've added. And so if we read to the bottom of the meniscus, we're exactly 0, 0.0 milliliters. All right, so here comes my first titration, fast and sloppy. I'm just going to open the valve on the burette, let it run in, and we're just going to try to get a ballpark idea of how much NaOH this takes. So I don't have to go drop by drop. Um, it's important to swirl while you're doing this. You want everything to mix together as quickly as you can get it. I'm going to walk to the other side. Are you yeah. seeing any flashes of pink yet? I just I was just going to mention that. I just saw a flash of pink. Oh, yeah. You see that? Right. And then see it swirls pink, away. And then it disappears. So we're getting close to the end point. Okay. Now it looks like it's pink to stay. Mm -hmm. Now we know we added a little bit too much NaOH. Yeah. This is not considered an end point, right? Yeah. We, we went past it. Um, but when I look at my burette now, it looks like it's right at about nine. See the nine there? Uh -huh. Yeah. So it means on the next trial, we can probably run the anti-OH in pretty rapidly until we get to at least seven, and then I'll try to go drop by drop mm -hmm. so we can catch the drop that turns it pink. Okay? Okay. So if we're recording this data, do we want to record trial one there where we overshot the endpoint? Well, I guess I always tell people record all your data, mm -hmm. but I know I'm not going to use that in my calculation. Right. So yeah, now after this, when we're measuring very carefully, then we're going to read to the hundreds place. Uh, that was about nine milliliters. And the burette is funny because uh, we have Zero on the top, as Mr. Hevel said, and then it goes down from there. And I I'm guess two. seeing the numbers on this, but yeah, there's our zero mark. Yeah. One, two, three, down there. And I guess we need an accurate measurement here, right? Because we need to know the start point. Right. If for I can. Next. Can we read it? Do you think? I'm looking at about nine. It's just over nine. Nine point. Is it to the 9.1 mark? I think it's just under 9.1. Can you see it? Yeah, I agree with you. So what do you want to call it? Like 9.05? 9.05. Mr. Moore has better eyes than me, so. Mm -hmm. wow. Okay, so there's the start of our first careful trial, 9.05. Okay, so, so write that down. This, yep. So this is uh, going to be our careful trial one. Yep. 9.05 is our initial volume in there. Okay, here's my 10 milliliters of HCl. Okay, so every time we'll have 10 milliliters of HCl. Yep. Okay, my two drops of phenolphthalein. What happens if you forget to add the phenolphthalein? Hmm. That's always a funny one. Because yeah. with no phenolphthalein, <laughs> there's no color change. Right. And so sometimes we have students tell, this isn't changing color, Mr. Moore, what's wrong? And it's because they forgot the phenolphthalein. 
We are missing out on that this spring, that, aren't we? That is always good for a, a laugh, yeah. at least for me. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> it's best when the kid empties the entire burette and says it didn't change color. That's the best. And I walk over, I put one drop of phenolphthalein and it explodes into pink. It's like, oh yeah. Okay, so 9.05, now I'm, let's see, plus about seven. So I can go to about 16, I think, pretty rapidly. Of course, it'd be helpful, Mr. Moore, if I put my glasses down so I can see that. Okay, 14. 15. So we know we're not going to hit the end point here in the first yeah. seven milliliters or so, because it took nine. Yeah. Um, now I did see a flash thing. of pink there that's okay. now gone. So now I'm going to try to go more carefully here. And if I get the valve adjusted right, this one's kind of touchy. Yeah, there is a technique here. You can just barely turn the valve enough to get it to go drop by drop. You see we have this white piece of paper down there too. That's helpful to see the color change. You can see that pink in there. It's flashing and then swirling away. Oop. This is a touchy one. Mm -hmm. This is a cool lab with the color changes. I'm sorry you can't do this in class. Oh yeah, you're getting close. See how that pink hangs around for a while before it swirls away? Okay, I think, I think that's it. Thanks for being smart. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, just when that solution turns pink, that means all the acid has been neutralized. Okay, and, so now we're trying to read you know, the beer out. Oh yeah. <laughs> I can't see it. Where is it? What do you see? 17.9. Yeah, I guess from the angle that I'm at, I don't quite see the, the major line. Can I step over here yeah, you. on this side of you? Oh, there it is. Yeah, it's not quite to the 18, is it? It's right. So it's 17.90. Yeah, why don't we call it 17.90. Okay, so that's the final volume. The initial volume was 9.05. Yeah. Right, so if we could take the difference between those readings, that, that'll be the volume we use for this first careful trial. Okay, now we're going to repeat that same procedure. We want to run at least two trials where we get a good endpoint and take the average. So then the final volume from trial two, which is what we have in here right now, is the initial volume of trial three. So 17.90 will be final for trial two, initial for trial three, and we'll do one more and get that final volume. do this in college, I'm sure Mr. Moore remembers these days, you had to run, you had to keep titrating until you got three trials that exactly that the same. agreed. Yeah. <laughs> and let me tell you, you can run a lot of trials to pull that <laughs> off. Yeah, normally college chemistry labs are four or five hours. They're yeah. the block of four or five hours, and so. that's why. Yep. <laughs> okay, so now let's see. Last time I ran in about seven, quickly. So we're at about 18, so I should be able to run in down to about 25 quickly, and then we'll try to go drop by drop. So. We do a lot of titrating in Chem AP. Yeah, we were talking about that this year. How many titration labs did we do? 
it, it's a lot. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Burette is More your new five. best friend. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Okay, so now I'm down to about 25. So now, uh, again, I'm going to, oops, hold on. The light's timed out on us. Okay. One more drop should do it. This is where it takes a real steady hand. Yeah. Okay, I think that's it. Yep. All right. We've got our pink endpoint. Help you out here this time for a change. Okay, so. It's not quite to the 27 mark. Right. 26 point. Eight. Well, I don't know what it looks like on your camera. Is it? Yeah. If I can rotate it around so we can get it lined up with the um, yeah sort of graduation lines. It looks I'd like go with. Go ahead. I was gonna say eight zero. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say too. Pretty close to the line. Twenty six point eight zero. Mm hmm Okay. So, so, so our final volume for trial three. Right, 26.80. So yeah, that delta V, the difference in volume, is the volume of the base. So what do we do with these numbers now, Mr. Hevel? Well, I'm thinking again that we know the molarity of the base, mm -hmm. it's 0.15. Um, if we know the volume in liters for a given trial, and we go volume in liters times molarity of our base, 0.15, That'll tell us how many moles of base we've used. And remember, when it turns pink, that's our end point, we know at that point the moles of acid that were in our sample are exactly the same. Yep. And so your, your task then is to figure out what is the concentration of this HCl, how many moles per liter is there. Sounds There's good. a tear in my eye, last lab <laughs> of the year, and it's really double tears because you guys aren't here. For sure. Good luck. Now, are those tears of joy? I'm not sure. <laughs> Have a good day.